texted me and said that his father-in-law just passed away. Uh, that'd be Sister Hillary's father. So let's all stand right now and just pray for that family that God would strengthen them. Lord Jesus, we praise you this morning. Thank you for your goodness and mercies. Lord, we pray and ask your strength, Lord Jesus, in this family, this time of loss, that you would lift them up, that you would, Lord Jesus, preserve them, Lord. We praise you and we worship you. and Thank you for them, Lord, and ask you, God, to just touch them and comfort them right now. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, and ask you, God, to just touch us all this morning in this Sunday school lesson, Lord, that your anointing be here with us, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good. It's good to be in Sunday school this morning. Amen. Amen. I don't know how your weekend went, but I just, I was crazy enough to work all weekend, so... Um, I'm feeling it. I don't know if you, if you all, you know, you start a project and it sounds real good when you start it and, um, you just get tired trying to get done. So, um, but God is good. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to read one. I'm going to start off with one scripture and then you can be seated. Uh, the, the scripture, our focus verse this morning, I'm just, uh, we, we had our adult Sunday school, uh, curriculum, I guess you might say. And because of COVID, we didn't get to do all of them. So I was, the Lord had put a, me, uh, 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 a message on my heart and just reading through the Sunday school material, bam, there was my, my lesson. So I said, Hey, I'm going to just go ahead and use, they already got it wrote down and I'm lazy. So amen. Uh, Matthew six and nine. That's a little bit too honest, didn't it? Uh, Matthew six and nine says after this manner, therefore pray ye, this is Jesus speaking, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and everybody say amen. amen you can be seated right now jesus speaking to his disciples begin to teach them how to pray uh, that that in itself if you kind of put that into your i guess your imagination and begin to to understand the value of Jesus, God manifest in flesh, begin to teach men how to pray. You talk about value right there. But if we would take ourselves and place ourselves within the time period that th this is in and 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 I, I guess study through uh, the King James version, the Old English. Uh, what it, it, it's amazing reading the the uh, King James version. Sometimes your your eyes glaze over. Anybody been there before? You're you're reading all the these and thous, and we don't speak that way. And and sometimes we just we're like, what are they saying? And we got to back up, read it again, and back up and read it again. Nobody's ever been there. I see a lot of heads shaking. Yes, <clears throat> but when when I was studying this, I I began to teach it to Chantry. Because I, I know that if Chantry can understand it, maybe I know what I'm talking about. You know, if you run it past your kid and they have no clue, maybe you need to study it a little more. It's not that their understanding is wrong. Maybe your understanding isn't right. So uh, understand that when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, it wasn't all just smoke and mirrors, but he was speaking on their level. And the problem that we have is that we're reading something that has been uh, interpreted from 
Greek into Old English, and now we're trying to apply it to the way that we speak now, which is about 2,000 years later, and English has changed a whole lot. I don't know if you know this or not, but it changes weekly now, daily sometimes. Speak to a teenager, and um, I pick on my daughter all the time about it's like this and like and like and like like I'm like, how many likes can you put in a sentence? But if you took I mean just think about it when you're when you're trying to explain something to somebody, you need to be very careful when you begin to explain the word of God. And I, I just want you to put I want to put a little of my load on you right now. I get scared sometimes when I want to teach something because it's fearful because you don't want to get it wrong. Okay? So Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. And if you, if you read in Matthew, the sixth chapter, we're going to start with the fifth verse. And it says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Now, this word in, in the Greek is actually actors. The hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They're going to get out of prayer just what they put in it. What's their reward? Well, they're going to fool a lot of people, but they're not going to fool God. So if you want reward in this life, you make a big show, but come judgment day, the truth's going to come out. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Understand that this sentence, when it says, shall reward thee openly, openly is not there in the Greek. This was added for a little bit more explanation. It just says that God will reward you. Now understand a reward comes with an openly example. When you're rewarded for something, it's usually not just you and that person rewarding you, but when a reward comes, normally everybody knows about it. So they put this in there, but understand that when Jesus is talking to his disciples, he's talking about a prayer between you and God. And when you pray, that reward is going to come, and it's going to be between you and God. Now, when you are rewarded, publicly it can come out as a blessing to other people. Because you are going to have the power of God in you when you pray privately to God. He begins to bless you and guide you and lead you, direct you into all righteousness, what you need to be doing. Because when you pray correctly, you're asking God, what do you want me to be doing in this life? Right? And when he tells you and gives you that knowledge that you need and you go out publicly and begin to exercise what God's telling you to do, there is an open reward, not only for you, but for everybody else. Because why? God's word is being hit. The seed is being sown. Okay. So when, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Over and over and over again, uh, my Lord, who has kids 
it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Chantry wants something. He knows I heard him the first time. But repetition, man, that really works sometimes. It does. But I heard him the first time. I heard him the first time. And, and you know, a lot of times, repetition will wear on somebody. Let, let, let's put this, I, I know God is not human. But could it be when you ask over and over and over and over and over again, could God just say, okay, you want it? I'll give it to you. Let's see what you do with it. Because there's a lot of times when, when my children want something and I, I say no. But over and over and over again, finally, you know, as humans, I'm sorry, people, we crumble. Right? Hey, can, I get a, hey, can I get a truthful amen? Amen. We, we mess up sometimes as parents and give in. And it's not always the best thing, right? So could it be that God at some point in your asking, could he just, he knows what you need anyway. But if you wear him down, could that blessing that you think you have really not be the will of God in Christ in your life? We need to think about these things. So after this manner, therefore pray our Father. This is great. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temp to, to, to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Very important thing, when Jesus gives you the model prayer and then a little bitty sermon following it, you need to pay attention. Because basically what he's saying is you can pray all this, but your heart be wrong, and all that prayer is not going to matter until you take care of your heart. Luke 18 and 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not to faint. Now, basically means to not stop. Continue to pray. Don't stop praying. Because perseverance is the is perseverance is where preparation led you so preparation is what gives you the perseverance you cannot overcome the enemy unless you prepare how are you going to prepare prayer amen if you want to execute something properly the you know the football player doesn't throw the 50 yard Hail Mary pass because he was sitting at home eating potato chips. Right? He dreamed, I don't know how many times of throwing that pass and he practiced that pass. So if you want to overcome the enemy, it's not going to be because you ignored prayer time. It's not going to be because you didn't say, God, I got this problem. You understand that every problem you have has to be addressed to God. Your problems are not for you to address them specifically by yourself. Because sin is addressed by God. And if sin is going to be fixed and, 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 re, and rendered helpless in your life, it's going to be because you applied God in your life. 
Amen. If you, if you don't want sin to have control over your life, it's not going to be because you yourself made up in your mind that I'm going to overcome it. No, it's when you apply God to your life. And understand what he wants in your life. And I'm, I'm here to please God. I'm doing this because why? Because God said for me to do it. Because why? I started off my prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, na your name is more to me than anything else, God. Your kingdom come. What, what, what is his kingdom, his will, his desire in my life? And when, when I pray that prayer... When I say, God, what, what do you want in James McCarty's life? What do you want in my life? What should I be doing? You know, I worry a lot of times when we, we, we just want all the, the perfect things in life, you know. I want healing in my body. But I, I feel a lot of times like, like Paul Paul asked three times for that thorn to be removed from his side. When, when, when he asked three times, when God said no every time, he shut up. God knows what we need in life, church. And when we go to pray for the healing of that person, we need to be praying for the will of God in our lives and their lives. You know, I don't want to be sick, but every one of us are going to get sick and we're going to die one of these days. Until you get to that realization in your life, you will not prepare for the afterlife because there's going to be one. There's going to be a reckoning one day and we're going to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And all your desires is not going to matter on that day. But when you stand before him, you're going to think, did I do everything that you wanted me to do, God? So when he says, this is the way you need to be praying, this, he's not saying these are the words you should be speaking, but he's saying this is the way your heart should be beating. This is what you should be wanting more than anything else in this world. Amen. And, and I'm not one, one thing I want you to know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect in my prayer life. <laughs> Amen. The person that thinks they're perfect in their prayer life probably doesn't have one. Jesus taught us to pray. Paul admonished us to pray. Our pastors remind us to pray, but some days we are busy. Amen. So we, we forget, okay? We could be lazy, could be the flesh. Some days we just do not pray. But when somebody tells us their woes, we remember the power of prayer. And we tell them, I'll, I'll pray for you. We say it. We mean it. Sometimes we mess up and we don't pray for that person. I hate to say that, but it's happened. So there's an app you can get for your iPhone that reminds you to pray. It's called Echo. You can... You can download this to your phone, and uh, I'm not saying it's bad, but there, you know, if that's what you need, it'll remind you to pray. When when somebody gives you a prayer request, you can go to Echo and you can type in that prayer request, and it'll remind you every day to pray for that. And then when the prayer is answered, you put the testimony in there that it was answers and rejoice. Everybody gets to rejoice. Amen. That's great. That's good. I, I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> My question is, is God calling you to prayer? 
it's fine if you want to use an app, if you've got a certain time, if you want to set your alarm clock, but understand that there comes a time in your life when you're just driving down the road. And, and God puts that person on your heart. You better be praying, God, I want to know what your voice is. I want to know your voice, and I want you to speak to me. I want you to call me to prayer. Because it's your kingdom, God, and if there's something wrong in your kingdom, if there's a hurting in your kingdom, I want to know about it. And you, I want you to depend on me to be that prayer warrior that you want me to be. Amen? Amen. So when the doctor diagnosed her with leukemia, Nona Freeman soon learned this would be the end of her work on the mission field. And she fumed about having only been there three years and already being too ill to do anything more. She was too embarrassed to ask friends to pray. However, her husband got word to one prayer warrior that he knew would pray. And when Nona Freeman got too weak to pray for herself, she laid down and just decided she was just going to die. She couldn't pray anymore. She was hurting in her body. And she said, I'm, I just give up. And God sent a vision to Nona Freeman. She said she was asleep and she seen a man praying. And she, in her dream, she got closer to this man and she recognized him. And she heard him praying for her. God, take this sickness from her she said it was just like electricity just went through her body and she was jolted up out of sleep with no pain and no sickness she said that it was in that moment that she realized how that king hezekiah must have felt when the prophet told him, you're, you're going to die. But he knelt down and prayed and asked God for more years, and God gave him more years. You see, there's times when, when I pray that it's just not for me, but it's for the kingdom. The truth is, if you're really a disciple of Jesus Christ, there's no way that you are not praying. Because a disciple is a prayer warrior. You are not a disciple unless you're praying. And when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, it was our Father which art in heaven. Your name means more to me than anything else. Every one of those disciples knew what Deuteronomy 6 and 4 was, the Shema. And they knew that every day that they would say the Shema, which is Brother Oren. Which is... Amen. There's no other God before me. He's the only one. My will is not my God. Amen? Because too many times our will takes precedence over our God. So all of a sudden, we become God. Amen? And we begin to pray to our God. And we begin to feed what our God wants. 
and we pray the ideals to our God. Amen. Amen. We have our own lust. We have our own desires. And pretty soon we can build up and pray that desire with, to existence in our lives. Whatever pleasure it is, whatever desire it is, whatever lust it is, whatever wrong it is, we pray to our God. But Jesus said we should pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Shema. You see, the Shema was, was pretty important to Israel. It, they, they were to acknowledge that God was the only God every door they walked through. There was a little tag that was on the doorpost. When they walked through that, the Shema was there. They would kiss it, and they were reminded that here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. What does that mean? That there is no other God in my life but him. That means that when I walk through that door, that's a transition into another thing. The, that's the direction I'm going because I had desire to walk from this room to that room. But my desire better include God when I walk through that door. Amen. Amen. So everything that I do, even when I when in transitions in my life, my prayer should be, God, is this your will? Not God, I want, God, I want, God, I want, God, I want. Pretty soon you convince yourself that's what you need. No, it's God, what is your will in my life? And pretty soon, if his will is greater than anything else, you'll find your will being put to the back burner. And you'll say, God, whatever you want me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us that the, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Interesting enough, you find out what righteousness is at the very last verse of Deuteronomy 6. It tells you that righteousness is obeying God. Boy, it is that simple. But boy, isn't that difficult sometimes. Because we have our desires. I, I, I guarantee you every teenager in here doesn't want God coming back. Because they have plans. We all were there, right? But the older you get in your walk with God, the more your plans become so meaningless. Amen. And you realize that it's all about God. And I'm, I'm going to encourage every young person to make sure that Yes, you, you've got plans. And yeah, you want to you get married to that special someone and you want to have a home and you want to have children or you know, whatever. Hopefully it's godly, whatever you want to do. But that's the deal. It better be godly. If your plans are not godly plans, you need to be readjusting those. Because your prayer should be our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does that mean? That means that you're more important than me. Your kingdom come. What does that mean? I want whatever you want in your kingdom to be happening. Amen. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Why, why that? Because sin has taken over the earth. Amen. Yeah. 
Sin has taken over the earth, and so we are the ones, the, the saints of God are the ones that are to proclaim in word what the kingdom wants. Whatever God is wanting to happen in this world, we need to be saying it in prayer. Amen. To the alcoholic, we should be praying in our community, God, I pray right now against the spirit of alcoholism. I pray right now against the spirit of drug addiction. In the name of Jesus, we come against every sin, every weight that's, that's holding people back, that's preventing people from being what you want us to be. And that's that's the kingdom mindness that we should be praying. Not, oh, Lord, I, I, I got to pray again. But, God, let's get something done in this kingdom. Amen. Let's make a change in this world. We want your kingdom to come into this world. We want your word to be done in this world. Amen. I'm not preaching anything new. I'm just preaching against the spirits and principalities in this world that's coming to rob the word that's being planted in your mind right now. I'm proclaiming that Jesus is greater than any idea and any sin that you have in your mind right now. I'm telling you that he can give you clarity and direction in this church house. And you can have a made-up mind, but walk out that door, and sin can just grab you just like that. That's the power of the Word. But you have the, the liberty in the Holy Ghost in this place right now to get God in your life and grounded in your life. Amen. The Holy Ghost will give you the power to pray. Amen. When Paul talked about praying in the spirit, he was talking about praying in tongues. There's some things that the devil don't need to know what's going on. Amen. When, when, when Jesus died on the cross, Satan didn't have a clue what was going on. Amen. When you pray in tongues, that is a prayer language between you and God. Read your Bible. Amen. There's something powerful about it. I'm not saying you're going to preach in tongues. I said you're going to pray in tongues. Now, there comes a time when there's tongues and interpretation properly putting within the church a word of God can come out in tongues. Someone can interpret perfectly in order in the Holy Ghost. Amen. There should be power in your prayer. There should be direction in your prayer. Hallelujah. How much time we got? Where we at? We got 10 minutes. Woo. I'm on the first page, but I, I preach way in advance. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When I first started, I, I told you that, that preparation is our persistence. That you cannot persist unless you prepare. Amen. And if, if I want to impress somebody about the job that I'm capable of doing, it's better to know how to do the job. Yeah. I had a man come to me one time, and he was proud of himself how he could lie to everybody. It, it, he was a, it was a job interview, believe it or not. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth on this. Job interview, Brother Ramon. And he came to me, and he told me how he lied his way into every job he had. And he expected me to hire him. Now, in the business world today, the regular business world, somebody might have been proud of him. 
but it's a strange thing, and Brother Ramon can, he's a witness here. It's a strange thing running a Christian business. Now, I don't put on my sign a fish, and we're Jesus' name, oil field company. I don't say that. Okay? But what we do better represent God. And what we do better be honest and truthful. It doesn't always make us a lot of money, Brother Ramon. <laughs> and you know this. It might get us run off a few places. Because we don't lie. We don't cheat. We don't steal. But God will take care of us. You know what you do in secret with God. He'll reward you. The greatness is not going to always be in this life. It's not. We're setting up treasures in heaven. <laughs> It'll be worth it all, church. If we put some time into knowing what God wants you to be doing in this life. In private, in prayer, and we focus in on what we need to be doing, and we make up our mind in prayer and say, God, when I walk through that door, I'm going to know that you're the God of all gods in my life. There is no other God, and I'll put in, I'm not going to put my way in your way, but I want to be in your way. I want you to be the light to my path. You need to be where I'm going and where I'm at, God. I want you to be there. He'll take care of you. It might not be everything that this old world has because we don't want it all. But we need to lay up them treasures in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I'm sorry. I didn't read everything in here. Hey, man, they have about an hour's worth in here, and I just try to cram it all in whatever time Brother Jimmy gives me back there. Hey, Amen. Are you glad you come to Sunday school this morning? Hey, Amen. Aren't you glad the presence of God is here? Hey, Amen. Let's all stand up right now and thank God for his word. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for your goodness and mercies, Lord, the power of your truth, Lord. The power of your word, Lord, that's never failing. Hallelujah, you're always there for us, and we praise you. We come against every sin, every weight that would try to hinder us from walking closer to you, God. And we ask you, God, to strengthen us in the power of your might, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing like the power of the Holy Ghost, amen. Hallelujah. His word's great. If, if you got time, and I know you do, uh, just study. It's amazing. Matthew 6 and Deuteronomy 6. They just go together real good. Amen. That's a good study material. Amen. Are we there, Brother Jimmy? Hallelujah. Five minutes. Amen. The thing about it is the power that we have in prayer is not our own. It's God's. Amen. And, and, and when something great happens, we're not the one to take the glory. It's him. Amen. I learned that lesson a long time ago. Uh, I, I believe every minister has messed up and thought, man, I did a great job. I remember the first message I preached that I really got a good response. It wasn't me. It was God. It was his word, what he gave me. And then I, I walked from that pulpit and thought, man, I did great. Boy, you talk about messing up the next time. 
Hey, Amen. He he has a way of humbling you. Hallelujah. It's his power. It's his church. Amen. And you know, when we see somebody hurting, we're supposed to go to them. Encourage them. Pray for them. Amen. We should feel the pain of somebody and, and know they need encouraging. Amen. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I think we're going to have, what, five minutes? And uh, then we're going to start praise and worship. We got Father.
I have a message from our pastor. He said, tell them all. That includes you mothers and you women. <laughs> Happy Father's Day for me today. Please let them all to know I appreciate them much. Love you too. Oh, that love you too was for me. Anyway, he want, I want you to know that um, he was not the happiest camper when he found out they had planned their vacation on Father's Day weekend. You know how much our pastor hates. for him. You guys have one up here? All right. I'm going to choose Jashanna. Would you help me today? Jashanna is my friend, and I love her very much. We are so glad that she comes to church with Sister Sarah. So she's going to draw three winning tickets for us. Can you say the last three numbers? Seven, six, three. Does anyone have? <laughs> Seven, six, three. You need to get yourself some hearing aids, brother. Anybody? Okay, lay that ticket down there. I know we have a lot of gifts, and sometimes we have to draw two or three times. Seven, five, zero. Seven, five, zero, brother David. You want to get one of those gifts and hand it to him? Yay, we got two to go. Thank you, Nicholas. Seven, seven, one. Seven, seven, one. Our vest, aren't you glad you gave your ticket back? He asked me to give his wife one, too. <laughs> Big cheater. 743. 743. Anyone? Anyone? Brother Cloyd, you got one last chance. <laughs> Come get a gift. No, she gave Oh, he already, oh, wait, I'm sorry. You got one already? Well, looky there. We have a great person up here taking care of business. Because my mind is not here, remember? 740. 740. Well, I'm telling you. I might get to keep this gift card for myself. 768. Seven, six, eight for Brother Daniel. Yay. No, this is not Brother Daniel. He is not a father. <laughs> but his father wins. We're so happy. Even though he's not here, he won something today. I do wish every one of you a happy Father's Day. I want to personally, I don't know if y'all saw me. I needed a box of Kleenex over there. But Brother James ministered to me today, and I want to thank you. I do. I thank him very much. I want to love God with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Without further ado, we have a sweet speech today. I don't know what she can say about Father's Day. <laughs> She's not even a mother. <laughs> but our pastor and our pastor's wife trusted her, so we're going to introduce Sister Olivia to say something for us for Father's Day. Hey, everybody, and happy Father's Day. Um, so I don't have like a long written thing to say or anything, um, but I do have a few things that I would like to bring out. 
Um, as you all know, uh, James McCarty is my father, so I've had a lot to deal with in my life. <laughs> but I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, <laughs> that's true, that's true. So I watched a video not too long back and it was a TED Talk. I got into TED Talks because of my dad and because of some teachers at school. And it was a TED Talk talking about dads. And something this woman said really stuck out to me was that moms are the ones that they're going to know your social security number they're going to know your doctor's phone number they're going to know all of the important things they need to show up at school at this time they need to be picked up at this time this is what they like to eat this is what they don't like to eat this is what they're allergic to but dads are the ones that know what you're scared of and they're the ones that know all of your capabilities and what you can do they're the one that's going to know if my kid had a superpower it would be finding snacks in the middle of the night, you know? They're the ones that know those creative things about the kids. Um, they even know what you can do before you know it yet. So a little story for you. When um, I was very little, I was like four, we moved into this new house and it had this huge long driveway. And I remember vividly getting on a tr my tricycle and going down the driveway at record speed and crashing into the middle of the road. And I remember laying there helpless and just crying out, mom, mom, mom. Well, she finally comes down and gets me, right? But it put this horrendous fear about bikes and tricycles and I was just petrified. I was like, I can't do it. I can't ride a bike. And dad tried so hard to get me to ride a bike. He was like, you can do it. I believe in you. Just trust me. And I was like, you're going to let me fall. And he was like, no, just trust me. I was like, I can't. And so he would get so upset with me. And he's like, I know you can do it. But so I never learned how to ride a bike. But dads eventually turn in to papas. And so when I was 11 years old, my parents went on a trip to pick up a travel trailer. And my papa was like, Olivia, you've never learned how to ride a bike. I was like, no, I'm just so scared. Dad gets so mad at me. And, and he was like, well, you're going to learn how to ride a bike this week. And so my papa taught me how to ride a bike at 11 years old. So I just wanted to say that dads are great. Thank all of y'all. I know your kids really thank you. You're the protector. You're the hard worker. You're the one that knows their superpower. And you're the ones that know that they can ride a bike even when they're terrified. And eventually, y'all turn into pawpaws who have patience enough to show the kid how to ride a bike. <laughs> so we love you. <laughs> That was great. She had something to say. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Olivia. Now we're going to have church. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Have a great day. But we're going to bless our true heavenly Father. Let's have church.
this morning. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Man, there is. it's good to be back in the house of God. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. It's good to see each and every one. While everyone is standing, we're going to go real quick into prayer and just pray everybody with a need this morning. Let's just lift up our hands for a need that's to be represented by that lifted up hand. Remember specifically, Brandon and Hillary, they lost her dad. If you haven't heard, he passed away this morning. Remember that family. Remember Brother Cloyd. I know we want to keep lifting him up. Remember Brother Gene, I seen this morning, I, th- I believe it, if I correctly, that he was uh, going to the doctor in the doctor's office this morning. So remember those specifically. But God knows that need. God knows that hand. He knows that rep- what it represented, right. what life. He knows each and every one of them. Right. Remember the remainder of this service and pastor and all that are traveling today, yes. Father's Day. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thankful for our Heavenly Father. Yeah, yeah. There is no God like no Jehovah. God, no. Thank you, no God like our God. Man, oh man, oh man. Thank you this morning. Let's lift our hands and just pray and take these needs before the Lord this morning. Lord, we love you. We worship you. We come as humbly as we can. God, as you know these needs that are made known by the uplifted hand. We pray for healing and, 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 and complete healing of every bit of sickness, healing th- to, through every body, every soul, every mind. God, we pray for every physical healing, physical need that you would supply, whether mental this morning, physical, emotional. Lord, you know those that have lost loved ones this morning. Lord, just let your grace rest upon them, your love and mercy, God. Oh, yes, Lord, this morning, in the name of Jesus, God, minister, move upon them. Move upon every need in this house. Lord, let every need be met this morning. We ask you to do it. Lord, touch and strengthen Brother Cloyd. Move upon Brother Gene. Move upon Sister Hillary, these specifically. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless Pastor today. Bless them as they travel. Bless each one here as we travel today. God, have your way today and your will. Let your sovereign work be accomplished in this place. In the name of Jesus. Oh, right now, God. Jesus' name right now. Oh, Jesus' name. Give him one more hand clap of praise this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy this morning. I thank you, Brother James, for that word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. While we're all standing as well, I want to ask Brother Shane and, and uh, Brother Ian, would you mind coming up and taking up our offering this morning? You, Jesus. Standing helps Jesus. you to get to those wallets a lot easier. Amen. Thank you this morning. Worship with us.
nothing is impossible that's going to go along with what we're going to talk about here this morning but nothing is impossible brother James mentioned sister Nona Freeman and if you haven't read any of her books there uh I would encourage you to do that I'm not a big reader but if I remember correctly Lisa read it and I listened but I believe I could read that. It just gets a hold of you. There was one time when her husband was leaving. I, I believe it was the States. She was still over uh, on the mission field, and she was very sick. And it might have been the time she was – she had numerous times where she needed God to touch her body. And this particular time, if I remember correctly, it was the one when she couldn't speak. And she had to write things down, and she told her children, her girls, to pray. And her husband was in uh, stepping out of a hotel room, if I remember the story correctly, and I hope I'm not telling this wrong, had his bag, stepped out the door, and the Lord said, pray for Sister Freeman right now, or she's not going to make it. And he said he just turned around and stepped back in, put his bags down, and began to pray. And that was another time that God healed her, completely healed her. She was uh, the, quite the opposite of myself. She didn't preach with notes. <laughs> God miraculously gave her an entire message one time, laid it out. She preached it with examples, scriptures, all the way through. And she said she felt, felt the Holy Ghost lift off of her at the end. She gave the altar, talk, altar call. A man was over, uh, very, very upset. Went to the pastor. She was called in. And she said, he said, where did you get that message? And she said, all I can tell you is the Lord gave it to me. I had no message for the night, didn't know what I was going to preach, stood up, went to the pulpit, and it was just flowed. And he said, I was a, a Baptist minister in my youth, and that was my message. He said, exactly, word for word, examples, everything. Where did you get it? And she said, I'm telling you, the Lord gave it to me. That's all I can tell you. He said, why? He was crying. She said, all I can tell you is he's trying to get your attention. And this man got the Holy Ghost right there in that office. God knows. God knows. And this morning, for the James, that was awesome. That's, there's much to say about our effort and prayer. And it's, it's just God's good. Amen. So, well, we're going we're gonna to start with uh, Lamentations 3. 3.22 through 23, we're going to go. I don't know how long it'll be. It may not be that long. And then again, we'll see. But it's Father's Day. Again, happy Father's Day. Uh, where'd Olivia go? Anyway, uh, talking about that bike riding. I just thought about how he kept on telling you, you just saying, oh, he might have been, uh, it might have been the way he was saying it. <laughs> and I know he's flesh, but I promise you, it was just, it came to my thought, is when he was speaking it, he was faithful. He was going to do everything he could to keep you from falling. And the Lord just said, I'm your, I'm the one that won't let you fall. I'm the one that knows how to be there. Yeah. And, he, and, and that goes right along with what I'm going to say this morning is, 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 is he's the faithful one. Yeah. I may let you down, but he won't let you down. So that is what we're going to talk about, but <clears throat> we'll get there. Verse 21 of chapter 3, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Everybody say, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. Verse 23, we said it. They are new every morning, but great 
is thy faithfulness. When talking, you may be seated. When talking about the attributes of God, the scripture uses many times, or in many times, it tells what or who God is. It says that God is a spirit, John 4, 24. God is love, John, 1 John 4 and 8. God is, he, is he called a consuming fire in Hebrews 12, 29. God is holy, 1 Peter 1 and 16. But the focus that I've already said this morning and what we're looking at is 1 Corinthians 1, 9 and 10 through and 13 says this, God is faithful. Pastor's been preaching about it, teaching about it, but about three weeks ago, it just came to my mind about God being faithful. And, and so when he asked to, for me to do this morning's uh, message, uh, it, I already had a feeling what it was. I told Brother James there, what was it, last Wednesday, that I said, well, he may preach my message, but that's okay. When God has a direction, he's going to go his direction, and we need to let him do what he wants to do. But God is faithful. Faithful in the Greek, it's a word that means reliable. Strong says it's uh, sure. He's true. It's objectively trustworthy. Come on, you can rely on him. He's trustful. Isaiah said it like this in the NIV. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, Moses uh, wrote. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil, Second Thessalonians 3 and 3. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Come on, he's reliable. It was said of Sarah that she received strength and she conceived seed and had a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. That's faith. When you believe that what he said, he's going to do it. It's not just a happenstance or maybe. No. He's reliable. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Jesus was called the merciful and what? The faithful high priest. Come on. For God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The writer being rhetorical, no doubt, but he was affirming this truth that God is faithful. What God has said he will do, he will do. Let God be true, and every man a liar, for the promises of God are yea and in him. Amen. For our faith, my faith, your faith, our hope today is in the faithful one. It's in the one that we can rely on this morning, this day, in your situation, right where you're at. For men verily swear by the greater an oath for confirmation is to them to an, an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the what? Immutability of his counsel or the unchangeableness of the purpose. Confirmed it, he said, by an oath in which the scripture says that God cannot lie. Why? Because Malachi 3 and 6, he says, for I am the Lord and I change not. That's who we're relying on this morning. That's who, that's who we're dependent on this morning is our faithful God. We can rely on him. You can, you can, you can rest assured this morning. He's reliable. If he tells you, let go, he's got you. He's got you. That's why when God made the promise to Abraham, the scripture would say that he could swear by no greater heaven and earth will pass away and it will pass away because he said it will. But he said, my word will never pass away. Right, right. Jeremiah 
This is him. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. We all know these scriptures, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and thoughts higher than your thoughts. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Come on, he's the first and he's the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning to end the ending. He which was and is and is to come, the Almighty. He's the author and he's the finisher. He knows right where you started and he knows right where you need to be. Where's our faith this morning? Great is thy faithfulness now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Not that he possesses. We know that he has all power at all times, but he works among us and through us according to that power that worketh in us. The, you know, the circumstances, your surroundings that, that are defining your day that you're living in, it's no match for the, for, for the manifestation or revelation of what God can do and wants to do in and among us. In him there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. The variableness is not in God, but it's in me. It's in us. It's in us. There is much to say about obe obey obedience and the will of God in your life. As Brother, Brother James preached it this morning to pray and do what you can and, to, and pray. Take, take and get, it, it is about that fervent prayer. But if you think that for one moment that, that, that you're going to hold God back or, or our lack is going to hold him back or this world's lack... And, and hold him back because they don't acknowledge him that somehow it's going to stop him from working or moving. You can perish that thought because he didn't ask your permission when he put this thing together. He didn't ask my permission when he created all things and it's held together by his word. He didn't ask our permission when he flooded the earth with judgment in the day of Noah. He didn't ask our permission when he called Abraham out and made him the father of the faithful. He didn't ask me my permission when he removed Saul from the throne or put David on it. He didn't ask our permission for the incarnation either or for establishment of the church or when he sat down at the right hand of throne of the throne of God. This world doesn't hold God hostage and neither do we. The only one that hinders God's progress or progression in their lives is we ourselves. The world can't do it unless you, you, you let it. Satan can't even do it unless you let him. But you and I can willfully step out of the hand of God when we, when we want to or even sometimes when we don't realize it and we, we step outside of God's hand. That's why it is so important to find that place of prayer. That's why it is important. Scripture, it says this, but every man that is tempted he's drawn, when he is drawn away by his own lust. Yeah. However, he says in this scripture, it's a principle that's over and over. You can find it that if you will, he says he will, conditional, that conditional working of God in our lives, that conditional working of God doesn't, does not limit God, but it, it may limit his working in our life if thou doest well. He said to Cain, thou shalt be accepted. From Genesis to Revelation, a principle is true. If you will, God will. If you'll do what you can do, he will do what you can't do. He'll make up the difference every time. He'll make it up every time. Oh, but Brother Jimmy, you don't know what I'm going through. He'll make I didn't say I would make it up. I said, he'll make up the difference. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He'll do what he promised. He will do. Because why? He's faithful. Great. The scripture said it. Great is thy faithfulness. 
if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. That call to prayer comes with a promise that he will what? Hear from heaven and he will forgive and he will heal the land. Abraham, when he was given promise to called, he was called to go out, the scripture says, into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing, but he obeyed. For saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong, how? In faith, listen, giving glory and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. We're not about works as if they can save us, but there's a principle of God's word that's true throughout Scripture, that principle that reveals faith in us. That's a faith that rests in him. If you will, God will. If you'll make, up, make the effort, then God will make up the difference. He's not afraid of a pig pen. He's not afraid of a graveyard. He's not, a, he's not afraid of sickness or COVID. He's not afraid of what's going on in America right now. It doesn't change who he is. He's still God. He's still faithful. He's still reliable. He's still sure. He's still steadfast. You can still stand on this word. We just have to have a made-up mind and a willing heart, and we've got to be honest with ourselves. Brother James made that joke about honesty. Now maybe that's a little too honest. We have to be honest with ourselves that I can't make it without him. But if you'll ask in faith believing, it shall be given, the Scripture says. Seek and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you for every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If you, in your walk with God, you'll learn that it's between faith to faith, glory, that glory there, that, that to the glory to glory, there's a, a walk that takes you sometimes through some of the life's hardest trials, but you can walk out sometimes over onto the smoothest seas. It was said one time to Brother Tenney, somebody said, I'm going through hell. And he replied, don't stop there. If you're going through, don't stop there. I've said it. I remember I, I, I've said it before up here behind this pulpit. Brother Barnes was asked, when do you enjoy life? Where he said, between the valleys. They're going to happen. It's going to happen. We all desire a mountaintop experience of Sinai and Carmel. We all, but, but you know, transfiguration. We all want those times in our life. But then there's those times when you find yourself entering into the driest valley you've ever been in. Have you, if you haven't been there, keep walking. But when you get there, keep walking. I, I know my personal experience in this past I'm just going to throw the number out in the last 12 months or further, what I have dealt with. But I've said it again. You know, you don't know me like I know me. But God knows me better than I know me. Great is his faithfulness. Come on, it's in the valley that Ezekiel received a word from the Lord and he began to prophesy. It was in the valley that the king received a word from the Lord through the mouth of the prophet Elisha to make valley, the valley full of ditches that they should be filled with water that they may drink. Where? Right there in the valley. Right in their circumstance. Right where they were. Right where... You, I don't know where everybody's at today. Maybe you're on the mountaintop, but I promise you, not everybody in here is on the mountaintop today. Not everybody in here is batting a thousand today. Life just happens, but God can show up right there in the valley. We oftentimes find ourselves looking, maybe not even purposefully, at the scriptures at those 
ancient characters of Scripture and we elevate them far too many times to heights, even if it's in our own minds to levels that are unattainable and we see them having traveled paths that are unachievable. And yes, they did do that, which is uh, unbelievable. We want to believe that they didn't feel like we felt, that they didn't fall like we fall, that they did not hurt or hope like we hurt or hope. That they didn't encounter the highs or the lows of life that we've encountered. We don't often think of the the defeats or the doubts or the despair, the trials or the failures, the discouragement that they encountered themselves. But you know what? It's an encouraging truth that they were as we are. They were subject to the same passions and problems that We are man that is born of woman, the scripture says, is a few days and full of trouble. No exceptions. There's no exemptions. They were flesh as you and I are flesh. They were no more, no less a man or a woman than we ourselves facing the same frailties of life and facing down the same fears that even we face. Even today, it's the same spirits but dressed up with different clothing. It's just, it's, that's all it is, folks. A spirit of hate is a spirit of hate. That's, that's just the way it is. They dress up with different clothes, and they're going to come at us again. They experience the same thing. And so even the best of us, spirit-filled of us, are carrying redeemed spirits around in bodies of bondage of corruption we're waiting for the redemption of our body the scripture says to wit the redemption of our body but i'll say it again they were as we are flesh is still flesh and that's all it's ever gonna be noah he got drunk from the fruit of his own success abraham lied about sarah being his wife and had a son with an egyptian woman that we still feel the effects of that one today Moses murdered an Egyptian and covered it up, so he thought. Gideon was called a mighty man of valor, but doubted and had to have not one but two fleeces for one promise. Elijah rebuilt an altar and saw fire fall, man, from heaven, but at the threat of Jezebel went into a wilderness, sat down, and requested to die. The Bible declares in that chapter that we call the faith chapter, Hebrews 11, that these men and women that fall into this category of a great cloud of witnesses, the ones that sometimes we hold up a little too high, now they should be esteemed. But the scripture says, of whom the world is not worthy, it's said that by faith or through faith, no less than 19 times, that these all died in faith, not having received this, the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded. Why? I'll tell you why. Because God is faithful. What he's promised, he's also able to perform. They all died in faith, letting us to know that if they could, then we can. Not out of human intellect, human ability, not out of myself, but because of God, the power of God, the spirit of God. There's no variableness in him. There's no, he does not change, neither shadow of turning, but it all comes down to that very scripture. Great is thy faithfulness. I don't know where you're at today. But just like those Old Testament saints, and you can get into the New Testament if you want to, but just like some of them, sometimes I don't get it right. Sometimes I don't have it all together. Sometimes I do fail God. Sometimes I do make mistakes. But God is faithful. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, everybody say, not me shall lift up the standard, a standard against him. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. Not if I fall, but when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord, not me, shall be a light unto me. That's our God. I'm I'm getting there, folks. 
But just because you and I are Christians, most of us that are, we, we, we learn this. But just because we've became a Christian doesn't in any way exempt us from the difficulties of life. Amen. We don't like them. I don't want them. But they happen. But sometimes you learn your best lessons in the valley. I don't want the valley. What was the old, I, I heard it the other day where somebody said God was working on somebody and they were praying and praying and praying and, and the Lord said, no, I think you're developing very well under this pressure. I'll just leave it there a while. We don't like that. But it does rain on the just and the unjust. The same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Job did certainly had it right. He certainly had it right. Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. That's why we've got to be stirred up. We've got to be brought back to remembrance once again to kindle that flame evaluate where you're at be honest with ourselves sometimes because you know what you might be right on the verge of a breakthrough you might be right on the verge right on the precipice you might be right there we're right there and you don't even realize it there has to be something within us a generation that rises up that says i'm not settling for less than what god has for me to have a made-up mind, come hell or high water, to listen, trust in the Lord. And, Lord, with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. I'm coming to a close. Psalms 121. And maybe this doesn't just get your motor revved this morning, but great is his faithfulness. Yeah. One day you're going to be in a place, if you haven't been there yet, to where you're going to either slip up, fail, make a mistake, or go through a trial. And, and, and I can personally say when I've messed up, sometimes you wonder, you, you, you have a tendency when you make a mistake. You, there's, a, there's a place in there you have a choice to make. Because for some reason, maybe it's just our human nature. You, you know, Adam hid after he made a mistake. Brother James, I found that when I've made a mistake, sometimes that hinders my prayer. I'm talking about even to start praying. That sounds weird, doesn't it? The next day, I find myself getting a little bit further. May not even pray that day, James. And if you're not careful, you can, you can just kind of keep on going. And, and you begin to coast because, man, you know you didn't. You, you messed up. But I found, and that's some of this from, I, I found that I went back to the Lord and begin to pray and just repent, just talk to him, try to clean out. And how so quickly. It's not to be taken advantage of. Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may abound? God forbid. You don't keep sinning to receive more grace, so you keep sinning. No. But I found that when you go back and begin to just seek the Lord, how he would just, he's faithful. He just... And he'll fill you again and cleanse you. Come on, it's that, it's that, Olivia, it's that bicycle. He's saying, hey, come on. I got you. I've got you. So if the musicians want to come, they can come. If they don't, that's fine too. Psalms 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Help 
is a word that means to secure, protect. Verse 3, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Keepeth is a word that's used throughout this, this chapter that means to hedge about, to protect, to guard, attend to. Verse 4 says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not sleep nor slumber. Come on, the Lord, verse 5, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hands. Verse 6, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Verse 7, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord, verse 8, shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. He can't be your keeper if he's not faithful. Because you're relying on him. You're depending on him. I've heard Sister Freeman talk about when she got to the mission field and maybe it was before the days of PIMs, but they had no food. No food. This is nothing. And they would begin to pray and a neighbor would bring over a basket of fruit because she judged him faithful. That's why she prayed. She judged him faithful. That's what you're doing. It's not just a, a, a going through the motions. But when faith is involved, you're judging him faithful. He's reliable. You believe he's going to do what he said he'll do. But we can get so caught up in this world and everything going on and circumstances that we just don't know. No, he's still faithful. Great is his faithfulness. It's a perfect faithfulness. For I know in whom I believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Isaiah, Sister Shonda, you can play or, or not. I, I, <laughs> maybe I, I don't know where you're at today, and maybe you don't want to admit it to me. Maybe you don't want to come forward or any of those things because people will know that you've got a situation going on. Whatever. I've been there. I've been back there and thought, uh, you know, that kind of sounds like somebody's in sin. If I go to the altar, that's going to look like that's me. But I need the Holy Ghost every day. I need, I need his anointing every day. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that formed thee. O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, they shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Come on, we have an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Where are you at this morning? What's going on? Maybe you just look around in this uh, great United States that we're living in and you're saying, what is going on? Satan's not going to make it easy on you. But there's a power of God by faith that'll see you through because he said so. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. I get weary. But he doesn't get weary. Come on, just, just pedal away. Pedal away. I've got you. I've got you. He giveth power to the
the faint and to them that have no might and, and he increases strength even the youth shall faint even you that are young you're going to grow up and get old and my knees are going to start hurting even the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary come on everybody they shall walk and not faint oh why don't we just stand this morning you might be there right on the verge don't give up come on lift your hands this morning you don't have to come down if you want to that's fine
probably the last surviving person to have seen or known an apostle. When they got him, and you can read the whole story about his death if you, you can search it up. It's not hard to find. But when they got him, it's, there's probably a number of us in here that probably know this, but it's quoted that he said, 86 years have I served him, and he has done me no wrong. They were trying to get him to, re, to, to recount. They were trying to get him to throw it all away. They said they'd let him go. And he said, 86 years have I served him and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king and my savior? Amen. James, I don't know. I, you, you don't really know until you're in a certain situation, but I, I'm hoping that we can, if we're ever in that situation, that the Holy Ghost would just say, hey, it's going to be okay. And we can say, bring it on. Yes. Right now it scares me. You be honest with yourself. I heard Brother Morgan say that one time. He said he was listening to, I believe it was a testimony, or it was where uh, uh, they, they come in and they shot and killed these Christians. It was uh, in the mission, over in the mission field. I don't remember the details of that part, but he said, Lord, I don't know. If I'm honest with myself, I don't know if I can do it. And the Lord spoke to him, and he said, if you are ever in that situation, I'll give you the grace to be able to handle it. 86 years he's done me no wrong that's great is thy faithfulness he's done me no wrong he's done you no wrong oh but brother Jim I, I just you know I just I, I'm broke all the time I'm hurting all the time I got pain all the time I'm sorry But he's still faithful. You can't explain it all. But he's still faithful. When we pray for somebody and it doesn't work, what do we do? We're still going to say, the next chance we get, we're still going to say, if somebody needs prayer, come on up. We're not going to quit because somebody didn't get what something they needed. You know why? Because I'm not the one doing it. I'm just trying to express faith. I'm judging him faithful that what he said he's able to do. You know where you're at this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Man, I don't know about you, but I, I feel the power of God here is so great. We have situations overseas, and we can come up here, and we can get some. But I believe God wants to touch somebody here. So before we leave, I want to one more time to allow this altar to be open. I don't know what you're going through, but God's got something for somebody today. Yes. Amen. Yes. So I'm asking you to search your heart, and if you need that little extra, amen, assurance from God, I believe he can give it today. I don't want to miss out on a blessing. I mean, the power of God is here. In the last year when we deputized, we saw over 500 miracles in one year. I hadn't seen 500 miracles in 40 years of ministry, but in one year. Amen. And I feel that same power here today. Amen. That God's going to touch somebody's situation or somebody's health and give them strength. So I'm asking if you're the one, would you please come up? Amen, 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 amen. Oh, Jesus' name. Jesus' name. If you're the one that is in need this morning, don't hesitate. I've told my kids many times, as they were little, I could take them to the altar. But when they got bigger, I said, hey, you've got to move when the Spirit moves. If you need something from God this morning, I'm just going to ask you to come. We'll anoint and pray with you. Amen. Come on. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. We're going to pray with these. Anyone else can come on up. 
Jesus' name. Let's, let's pray with these this morning. Jesus' name. Anyone else? Anyone else? Jesus' name. Power of God flow right now. We judge him faithful in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus. Brother Gene, do you need prayer this morning? Brother Gene, do you need prayer this morning? You need prayer this morning. Let's pray for Brother Gene in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Heal, Lord. Heal, Lord. Come on, we judge him faithful to supply Jesus' name. Oh, yes, yes. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we all just thank the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, why don't we all just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for supplying. Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Even when we're not, you're still faithful. And that is 
Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you all for being here this morning on this Father's Day happy Father's Day once again but I'm thankful for our Heavenly Father was just as the scripture says one Lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all there you go just keep it going above all and through all in you all Amen. It's a blessing to have a church and a church family. It really is. There's, you know, <laughs> boy, I better watch out. I might get too honest, James. All them ding, ding, sometimes I aggravate you on them notices from, the, from those lists of, but you know, there's nothing like whenever I have a need and I send that out, that first need. I, it never fails me, and I'm telling on myself, but that's okay. It never has failed when I've sent out a prayer request to everybody, and the first one, maybe Brother Jordan or whoever, saying praying, and I just, it breaks, it just it gets a hold of me every time. That first time, it comes back, and I, I can just settle back, and I know that people are praying. So I can get aggravated, just keep doing it. It's okay. Because I do pray. It's just, you know, when you're doing things and you you're, you got your phone and it's ding, ding. I got mine on vibrate now, so. <laughs> Amen. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for coming. Go have a good day with your dads. and Church what? 5.30 tonight. If you want to come pray, come pray. 5 o'clock, that's fine. Uh, find somewhere to pray, even if it's at your house, in your car, on the road, wherever. Just keep your eyes open. Amen. Thank you all for being here. You're dismissed. Amen. <laughs>